So with all the negativity thrown around on the internet these days with respect to the Java language and how verbose and slow it is, can you actually create a full stack functioning web application from scratch in less than 10 minutes using the Java language? Okay, so having said that, let's dive into it. So let's start the timer, let's generate this, this code. It creates a zip file, I'll put it on my desktop. We'll go and we will open up the desktop and right click on it and say extract. And now we will extract it to my Git folder, which is where all my projects go. Boom, goes to Git. Now we can go into, what you call it here, Eclipse, no, IntelliJ and say open. And we can go to Git and we can open that five minute demo project. So it should open it up. You should hopefully realize it's a Maven project. If it doesn't, you can always go on the right here, this little Maven tab, click on five minute, whatever, and refresh it. And it will essentially give you the blue folder here. So if you see blue, that means that you're doing things right. So let's create some packages. Again, I'm gonna go fast here and I will have in the next video, I will have an entire explanation as to what all these steps are and, and do a better job at teaching. Right now, the purpose is not to teach, it is to show that I can do this in, you know, five, 10 minutes, right? Showing that Java is not that slow a language when it comes to creating stuff. So we'll create a user class. This will be an entity and that will mean it's, it's essentially like a database table. So we'll create a database table called users and we'll have it have a, an ID and we'll mark that as an ID using uh, essentially hibernate-ish JPA and we'll use generated value to generate the actual values for the ID and we'll store username and password. You can put a bunch more stuff here, but this is really all you need for demonstration purposes. So we'll create the getters and setters for those guys. And we'll even create a two string method for that, just for the sake of ease. We'll create another interface here. We'll call it the user repository. This will be used to talk to the database. This extends something called JPA repository. We'll pass in the user and integer being the type of the ID for the user is integer. We'll create a user service, which is where your business logic should go. In here, we'll have, let's see, we'll have a save method that takes a user and actually saves it to a database, which again, we'll use the repository to be able to talk to the database. We'll bring that in via a constructor. And this user, we will save. So we can do user repo dot save and pass in the user. Right, that's all we need to do to save. We should also have a method to find all of the users and return them. So that is helpful. You can do that from the user repository, find all. So you can say return that. So again, I'm going fast here and I will explain everything later in the next video. We'll also can, can create like a user controller or something like that, right? So we can have this return a view. So we can do a get mapping. We'll just do it on the root URL, public string, you know, home or something, or we'll call it index or I don't know. But the point is this will have a model that we can populate. MVC, model view controller. We want to be able to populate the model. So the model we'll populate with the user. So we'll say new user object. And we'll also want to populate it with users, which is essentially all of the users from the database. So we'll bring that in from user service dot find all which I need to bring in the user service here, which is here, private user service, user service. And we can create that constructor that brings in the user service. I need to import this guy. Cool, cool, cool. And then we'll have this return index. So that'll populate everything on into an index.html file, which we'll create in just a moment. We should also post, be able to post, which is creating the user into the database. So we'll pass in a user to create in the database user service dot save the user. And then this can just return a redirect back to the home page. Cool, cool. So that's pretty much it there. The resources, the application properties file is where I said I'm gonna cheat and copy paste this stuff. We'll go over that in a moment. And then we're gonna create a HTML file, which will be the index.html. In here, I wanna leverage time leaf. So that's the XML namespace of TH is time leaf, HTTP colon slash slash time leaf dot org. And in here, we can create a form that will post. And inside of this form, we'll create a couple divs, one div, two div, and even a div down here. This one will be the usernames. And this is, well, usernames, the username and the password. 
So we'll have an input here that is a type text. And basically this will take the th field and grab that from the model. And here we can create an input password and the same thing. We'll grab that from the model as well or populate it to the model. User.password. And then down here, we can actually iterate through all of the values in our database. So we'll call this a user as we're iterating through the users of variable. And then we'll create a div that will actually show that user, right? So we can say a user dot username to actually output that to the console or to the page. And that's pretty much it. So you can stop the timer. I don't know if that was maybe about five minutes or so and fire up the server which is just over here. You right click and you say run. We'll see if this runs. So boom, it started up, it creates the tables and it inserts some stuff here. The generated value, I could have done this a little bit better. It's using a join table here. I could have done this a little better. Instead of saying generated value, I could also have, should have also said a strategy is identity. Okay, so that's really what I should have done. My bad, I forgot. Again, silly bug that took two seconds. You can drop the database and recreate it, the, the old code would have worked. It's just, it's not as efficient as it possibly could be. So that bothers me on the inside. I should have done that right the first time. So when you use identity, then it doesn't use a join table. It uses the, the auto increment that's built into MySQL. So as you can see now, it just creates the table users. There's no other tables. It's just neater. Anyway, it would have worked. Let's go in and go to localhost 8080, just the root URL. So now, ooh, I forgot to create the button. Shoot, you need a submit button. Again, not much time, button, submit, create account, done, right? That's all, that's all. That was like another three seconds. So we'll do test user one with whatever is the password. We'll say, create the account and boom, test user one shows up here, right? So I can say test user two and create another account, boom, test user two. And I can prove that that's actually being, you know, stored in a database because you can go to the database now and go to the web app. Look, there's a table now, there's a user's table. So you can actually say, you know, select star from users to see, are there users in the database? Yes, there they are, right? They have IDs being generated, ID one, ID two, username and password are there. Now the passwords are not encrypted. There's obviously more stuff that needs to happen here, but there you go. I just wanted to show you that you can actually create a web application with a database, with a controller and services and, and CRUD, you know, possibilities in order to, you know, create the data and read it. You know, it's not that much harder to add methods to delete these guys. So yeah, creating Java web apps from scratch are not, not that difficult these days. There's a lot of new tech that make it really, really nice. So in the next video, which I'll put somewhere above me, you can click on that video and I'll get into the actual explanation of every single one of these steps, right? Cause I went real fast. So now let me break down everything that I did step by step so that you get a good idea and a good understanding of how this stuff works. Like I said, there's the five pillars of full stack development. I hit on every single one of those pillars in this presentation. So let's flip over to that video, click on it, and I'll explain exactly how it all works.